you know, I, I looking at what Alex Jones has said about critics of Israel, calling them scum. Hey, Alex, I'm a critic of Israel, and I'm not scum. And Hashem Talawi, who broadcasts in this network, he's a critic of Israel. He's not scum. Mark Glenn, you think he's scum? No, Alex Jones, we're not scum. And I take it personally when you say the critics of Israel are scum, Alex, because we're not scum. What is scum? I don't know. I use the term myself. But I've never called you scum, Alex. You're saying the critics of Israel are weak-minded idiots. You say, I watch these Nazi and anti-Israel groups. They're a bunch of scum. Well, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, all I have to say to you is, Alex Jones, take a running jump straight into hell. Because if you're going to call the people who have the guts to stand up and criticize Israel which has the wealthiest, most powerful lobby in this country, which has the backing of billions and billions of dollars from some of the wealthiest people on the face of the planet, and you call us the anti-Israel groups, the critics of Israel scum, well, Alex, I, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that it says more about you than it says about us. I've been, I, you know... I mean, I gave I gave I've been giving Alex the benefit of the doubt here for a long, long time, folks. Even though on his program, he allowed people like Robert Groden to call me an anti-Semite because I wrote a book that suggested Israel was involved in a Kennedy assassination. Well, as I've said repeatedly, I don't mind being called an anti-Semite. You know why? Because they say that just about they've, they've said that just about about everybody of any consequence in the world. Some of the most brilliant people, some of the most brilliant writers, entertainers, some of the best people in public life here in Europe, all around the world, great intellectuals, everybody's an anti-Semite. And they've widened the definition of anti-Semitism to say that, well, according to Merriam-Webster, if you're a critic of Israel, then you are an anti-Semite. Well, yes, folks, I am a critic of Israel. And so that makes me an anti-Semite. By God, I'm proud to be an anti-Semite. And I think that would be, I think I could speak for a lot of other people who feel the same way. But Alex Jones says that critics of Israel are scum. And you know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? Alex, who talks about all his years of research, he talks about how the Nazi groups, this is very interesting, he talks about how the racist and Nazi and Klan groups are all critics of Israel, and they're scum. And he says, well, they're COINTELPRO. And then he goes on to say, well, see, this is what the trick is. He's playing this funny little game. He says, here's what the trick is. They, that is, the, the government, puts, puts these Nazi groups up, which then criticize Israel, and then it makes the rest of us look bad. There's some, some convoluted theme along these lines. Except, folks, I actually have done a little bit of research about COINTELPRO, and I can also tell you that back in the 1960s, when the Ku Klux Klan, one of the, one of the chapters of the Ku Klux Klan, and there were many chapters of the Ku Klux Klan, folks, the chapter, one chapter in particular was particularly influential, and it was led by a guy named Bill Wilkinson. And it is a known fact that Bill Wilkinson was a long-time informant for and working on behalf of, for whatever reasons, which are known only to him and to God and the FBI, but Bill Wilkinson was working for the FBI. And it is a known fact, ladies and gentlemen, and this completely refutes Alex Jones' convoluted theory. It is a known fact that Bill Wilkinson had a very firm rule, you can attack the blacks all you want, but lay off the Jews. And that was the orders that the FBI in their COINTEL pro program used in dealing with quote-unquote hate groups. That's right. Lay off the Jews, lay off Israel, but attack the blacks all you want. That disproves Alex Jones' whole theory here, folks. Or his claim. It ain't a theory because... 
There's no basis for a theory. It's just a claim, not based upon reality. More about this when we come back, and I'll be glad to take your call. I am not criticizing Alex Jones because of the fact that he sometimes likes to steer clear of discussing some of the issues that I discuss and what other people discuss. That's his right. I understand it. Okay, I understand, you know, that he's got a lot of Jewish business associates. I understand, so they say, that his wife is Jewish. I understand, you know, uh, you know, I've heard stories about some Bronfman connections through a big shot lawyer down there in, uh, down there in Texas. No, I'm not criticizing Alex for that. I'm criticizing Alex for going on the air, attacking critics of Israel and calling them scum. So I'm not scum. But Alex Jones says the critics of Israel are scum. Well, there may be some critics of Israel who are scum, Alex, but I'm not. And I know I know Mark Glenn isn't. I know Hashem Talawi isn't. I know Phil Turney isn't. And so many I know I know Ted Pike isn't. I mean the list goes on and on and on. So where the hell are you coming from, Alex Jones, using that kind of language? to talk about critics of Israel and to imply, well, and even the implication, it's supposed to be an insult to say they're all Nazis. Well, you know, Alex, I'm sorry. I've done a little bit of research on, on Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, and, and, and you know, I'm going to be honest about it, Alex. I think your, your research in that realm has taken you into some pretty crazy areas where you spout off a lot of stuff about Nazism that just isn't true. And I'm not afraid to say that because I know what I'm talking about, Alex, and I know I've heard some of these crazy Nazi stories that you've told, like the Bilderberg is a Nazi group. Nothing could be further from the truth. And, Alex, I'm sorry that I keep hearing you attach the word Nazi to Bilderberg because there's absolutely no connection whatsoever. So I'm just here to say, folks, that uh, you know I've, uh, I've you know I, I, I you know Alex was really upset. This is kind of interesting. Alex was really upset and hounded the folks at RBN after I, I after I said boo to him after I was criticized by him and his guests when someone called in to talk about my book Final Judgment about the Israeli connection to the JFK assassination conspiracy. And I responded to the criticisms on Alex's show, and Alex pitched a fit and said he was going to invite me on the show. I never got an invitation from Alex, and I let that go, and people would ask Alex about it. And, you know, and I, I let it go. I let it go. But I'm telling you, when Alex starts saying that critics of Israel are, are, are Nazi scum and so forth, you know, that just, that, that, that's over the top. That's beyond the pale. That's just too much. And, you know, Ted Pike, Ted Pike's a good fellow, and I don't agree with Ted Pike on everything. I'm sure Ted Pike doesn't agree with me on, on everything. But, you know, Ted Pike's a good man. He's, he's good-spirited. And, uh, and, you know, here, here he has really gone out, really gone out on a limb and probably, probably cost himself some support, moral support, financial support, public support, tactical support by criticizing Alex Jones. But, you know, I'm reading and rereading what Ted had to say. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I think he's, he's put his finger on it. And, you know, Alex, uh, Alex frequently describes himself as the biggest thing since sliced bread. May well be true may well be true but I, but I tell you something as I say I've been around this movement for a long long time I've seen them come and I've seen them go but I tell you what I tell you what I'm going to be completely honest here folks I'm going to be completely honest here and it's going to upset a lot of people based upon my experience based upon my observation of, of Alex, you know. 
I have to say that uh, his rise to prominence was, uh, well, let's just put it this way, quite extraordinary. And I'll just leave it at that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, lots, a lot of listeners here. People are probably screaming down the phone lines to the folks at RBN right now saying, get that piper off the air. He attacked the king of conspiracies. Well, no, the king of conspiracies attacked a lot of good people who are critics of Israel, calling them scum and mentally ill and all sorts of other things like that. I may be mentally ill, but I'm not scum. <laughs> I'm not scum. I know a lot of scum. I've been around a lot of scum, believe me. I've been around all sorts of people in all sorts of places in my 50 years. I've had some friends who've been scum. So I know scum, but I'm, I can tell you that being a critic of Israel doesn't make you scum. Okay, let's go to Steve calling from Chicago. Steve, what's going on tonight? Well, uh, it's A.E. Jones, uh, Alex Emmerich Jones, or as I like to call him, uh, Arch Enemy Jones. Uh, <laughs> the, the situation here, he's promulgated a lot of lies, and he won't let people repudiate him on, on the, his own show because he's a, he's a free speech advocate, but when it comes to uh, you know uh, correcting him, uh, he doesn't allow that. He's blaming the, the Germans for all the wars. Well... When it comes out that England was agitating uh, in 1914 uh, to put back uh, the uh, the uh, royalty of Sachsen von Kohlberg and and uh, depose the Prussian nobility, um, the Kaiser, uh, and they were fomenting civil wars uh, amongst the Germans. And uh, it's the old story: when two quarrel, the third rejoices. Uh, that never gets uh, uh, talked about because it's always the Krauts and the uh, uh, the war guilt lie. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and one of the things, you know, I was going back to an old pamphlet. It was written by Wilhelm Marr. Uh, it's in German. It's the, uh, the Jews uh, conquering uh, um, uh, the German uh, culture. And it had to do uh, with, uh, at that time in 1879, he was complaining that three quarters of, of the press at that, uh, and in 1879 was controlled by the Jews. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, going back that far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and he was talking about how they, they uh, write these scandal sheets, uh, and, you know, all the gossip and all the crap like that. But I think, you know, it, it comes out, he says, it's a Jewish press industry. They, they have monopolized the theater critic, the art critic. Uh, the, all the stuff was in their hands. It hasn't changed one iota. In fact, they've gotten even stronger. And it stinks the guys like Alex Jones, who, ha- who have some kind of um, uh, subconscious uh, hatred towards anything that isn't uh, English. Uh, I think he's a supremacist, and I will quote Joe Chamberlain, and then I'll hang up. Joe Chamberlain was, of course, uh, uh, Neville Chamberlain's father. And he said uh, in 1889, I believe that the British race is the greatest of the governing races that the world has ever seen. And how they're going to occupy the great surfaces, uh, great spaces of the world's surface, and that's they're the landlords. And that, to me, is Alex Jones' pro- uh, problem right there. He's, he's running nothing but hate propaganda. It's ethnic, ethnic hate of other, uh, of other Europeans. And as Carolyn Yeager has said many times, There'll never be unity in this so-called patriot movement unless the English Americans, the British Americans, lay off the other ethnics. That's all I have to say. All right, Steve, I appreciate that call, and uh, you made some pretty good points there. We've we've talked about that here on the air. You know, Alex uh, Alex does have this tendency to uh, to blow off the uh, uh, I should say to uh, he has a tendency to to perpetrate and perpetuate and propagate the World War II lies of the American, Soviet, Jewish, and British elites who got the United States into that hellish war that turned into a world war. That is true. That's an absolute fact. Now, I will criticize Alex for that because 
He just got his history wrong. He's got his history wrong. Well, I was going to say speak of the devil. I shouldn't say that. Speak of the lady. Steve, who just left us, mentioned our next caller, who is Carolyn Yeager, who was a guest on this program last week, twice, in fact. Much to the delight of our listeners. Let's bring Carolyn up. Carolyn, welcome back. Well, hi, Mike. Thanks for letting me come on again here. I just wanted to call you tonight, and I really like your topic. I think you should just give give him hell more often. You know, you don't do it often enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I, you know, I, I want to tell you I don't know whether I should blame you <laughs> or what, but I think from being on your program last week, gave me such a higher profile that I have now been written up by the SPLC and our friend. Oh, really? Uh, talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's congratulations. See. You, this, you, well, that's you can really judge a lady <laughs> by her enemies. <laughs> yeah, let's see. It was September 21st a couple of days ago in his blog, uh, quite a long article, and there's lots of comments on it, but it's about... It's about my book, you know, that you talked about so much and mentioned over and over again while I was on and, and talked about my website. So I think it got their attention because I've never gotten their attention before. And so he's written this. Uh, well, well, Carolyn, you deserve it whether I brought it to you or not. You deserve <laughs> it because you've done some great work, and uh, it's about time you, the credit goes where the credit is due, <laughs> even if it comes from scum like that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't know I was little when I first saw it. It sort of shocked me, you know, and uh, picture and everything. So I thought, whoa. But then, uh, actually, you know, Mike, I have to tell you, he's doing a good thing here because he has described the book and quotes all sorts of uh, passages, uh, you know, phrases that I used in it about all the wonderful things <laughs> that are at Auschwitz, he's all the things that nobody knows copies. about. And he thinks, you know, that he's making me look foolish, but... I think as people read that, at least they're hearing about it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. something they've never done before. So I was going to say, oh, what's Mike done to me? But now I guess I'll have to thank you for it. <laughs> hey, well, I'm glad to take the blame on this one. <laughs> okay, well, you just keep, you keep doing what you're doing. I think uh, this idea, anybody who is going to stand up and defend Israel today in that way is, is that person has got a real problem. And yeah, you, know you, know, that, you, you know, know what that, their now, problem Carolyn, is. They're Car totally Carolyn, you, you just said something. You just made a very simple observation there, but yet it is so profound. That, that yeah, the, the idea that anyone, anyone could, could, could describe the critics of Israel as scum, I, I mean, is just extraordinary because that would mean that would mean that there are probably several hundred million scummy people on the face of the planet. Well, and you have to figure that um, it's the other, it's the it's those who support Israel that you might call scum. Yeah. And what the Israelis are doing is very scummy, and they've been doing it for a long time. So uh, I, it just tells me that uh, Alex Jones, who I never listened to anymore, I haven't for years, but um, he is... He must have gone all the way over. I mean, he he must be a total Zionist, and uh, he's on that side. I don't, you know. I mean, that's all there is to it. Yeah, I mean, the people that hear the people, you know, Alex has some devoted followers, uh, and you know, they they believe everything he says. And, well, and so when when they, he comes on there and says he says that the the the, 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 the supporters of Israel are scum. And that they're really COINTELPRO agents who are being put up for some obscure purpose to, I, it's never completely clear as to exactly what it is he says they're doing this for, but, but, you know, it's another conspiracy theory and it's, it adds fuel to the fire, you know, and gets people all excited. Aha, yeah, well, Mike Piper and Carolyn Yeager must really be Zionist agents because, well, they, oh, yeah. they say boo to the Holocaust and, and they criticize Israel and, well, Alex says so, so they, he must be right. Well, you know, they believe the that Adolf that Hitler was, uh, wasn't, I don't know what he was. Of course, uh, those who don't like the Zionists think he was a Zionist agent, and those who do like the Zionists uh, think he was, uh, he's, I, I, there, there's a group of people, Mike, I'm sure you're aware of it, but it shocked me because I didn't know people could be that far gone, and they were really serious about it 
who have putting out this stuff that uh, Hitler just died not too long ago in the United States at the age of I don't know what, and uh, and Mengele is still here, and and Himmler was here, and uh, let's see who else who else on that famous list. Was here in oh the, they were uh, all here at one time or another apparently oh yeah they all came over here and they were running and this is the uh, just as you've talked about which I never pay any attention to but I know they're really serious about this that this is, the whole government is run by the Nazis and the Nazis never you know they never quit you know and they just transferred over here and now they're running the United States government the CIA is what they're running not yeah, the government yeah exactly the CIA that, that's, yeah. I guess that's the story yeah. <laughs> But when I heard Mengele, and oh, I wish I could think, who is that other one? Another strange person who's still still here, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, you know, they they must there must have been something in the water in Germany that that kept them so strong. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, it's Tesla. <laughs> it's Tesla. Uh, they they have control of all the Tesla uh, ah, uh, there you work go. and and uh, inventions, <laughs> and uh, they're using that to stay to stay alive through into extreme old age. So. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> These people. Hey, Carolyn, I think, I think we're on the wrong side. <laughs> well, they're taking it. They, they take it very seriously. And what yes, do you do with people problem. like that? What You can't even talk about using reason and logic. I mean, forget it. Exactly. And that's precisely the kind of craziness that I'm talking about. And yet they'll talk about that kind of crazy stuff, but they can't take a serious look, as you've done in your book at, about, at, at Auschwitz, they promulgate all of these old saws, you know, that we've heard we've heard for years about, you know, and I'm not just talking about the Holocaust, about about war guilt, as Steve was talking about in World mm-hmm. War One and World War Two, mm-hmm. and then of course these evil Nazis who started the war that now they're over here running things. I mean, it goes on and, and they're running Bilderberg, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it it is a shame. It's not so much the people who are putting this out, but the ones who go along with it. Um, it's it's just kind of scary. Yeah, uh, scary. Yeah, well, that, that Carolyn is an understatement. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really good that you're doing what you're doing, and you know you have such loyal followers, Mike, because they just need to hear they need to hear people saying what you're saying. Well, unfortunately, yeah, it's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. And as <laughs> I say, I really wasn't. I really was not feeling well this evening. Just tired, you know. I just had a long yeah. day, and I was tired and. And I wasn't sure I was even going to be able to do the show. I was going to call them up and say, I'm not going to do the show tonight, you know. And But then I got this email, and I started looking at some of these things that, that Alex had said, and I was aware that he had said it. But but then, you know, piling it all up there, you know, I just said uh-huh. to myself, no, you know, I'm going to say something about it tonight because it has to be said. Well, I'm glad you are, and uh, I was wanting to call and tell you about this, so... Uh, it fit in, and it I thank you for perfectly. taking my call. Uh, let you talk to some other people. All right, always good to hear from you, Carolyn. Right, Keep bye up bye. the good work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, yeah, we have the cigar with us. How are you tonight? Michael the Great, how are you? What's going on? You know, the other day, uh, hearing a comment by Jones that he was the chosen uh, person to be in the spot where Glenn Beck is, but... The reason they chose Beck over Jones, according to Jones, is because uh, Beck was an alcoholic who was on drugs and Jones wasn't, uh, which I thought was an interesting statement. But this is the kind of nonsense you get from this guy. You get a sliver of fact, you get part World Wrestling Federation, and uh, then you just get Jones' fantasy that he's a legend in his mind. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I, 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 I'm, I, let's put it this way, it is entirely possible that the powers that be were considering Alex Jones for the particular role, so to speak, that, uh, that Glenn Beck now occupies in the mass media. So, so I think that's entirely possible, and I am surprised in a sense that, that Alex and I, I assume, I, I have no doubt that he said it. I, I'm not questioning your word. I, let me just put it this way, though. I am surprised that Alex would admit something like that because admitting something like that would mean that the very people who are behind Glenn Beck were considering Alex Jones to play the role that Glenn Beck now plays. And frankly, if I thought 
that I was being selected for a role like that, I sure as hell wouldn't admit it to the public. So, so yeah, well, Jones was himself on uh, on mainstream AM radio for a period of time, and then uh, you know, everybody probably recalls these various debacles, like I had mentioned with Y the K. Then he got in that on that uh, John Joel Gray or the uh, the guy in Texas that was holed up. Uh, and then, of course, after Jones' intervention, that ended in a disaster. Uh, so, you know, it's very questionable some of these, uh, many of these tactics by Jones, but I just think you've solidified your audience, and I really don't think there's ever been a doubt with your audience with you, Michael. Well, I appreciate your comments, and as I say, I, uh, uh, you know, I might not have said what I said here tonight if it hadn't been for those, uh, inappropriate comments by Alex and inappropriate they indeed were so uh, thanks for your call there cigar buddy alright ladies and gentlemen it is time for me to go to bed I'm tired and that's what I'm going to do hope you all have a nice evening and I hope uh, well we'll just let the chips fall where they may a lot of other people who feel the same way but Alex Jones says that critics of Israel are scum and you know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? Alex, who talks about all his years of research, he talks about how the Nazi groups, this is very interesting, he talks about how the racist and Nazi and Klan groups are all critics of Israel and they're scum. And he says, well, they're COINTELPRO. And then he goes on to say, well, see, this is what the trick is. He's playing this funny little game. He says, here's what the trick is. They, that is the, the government, puts puts these Nazi groups up, which then criticize Israel, and then it makes the rest of us look bad. There's some, some convoluted theme along these lines. Except, folks, I actually have done a little bit of research about COINTELPRO, and I can also tell you was involved in a Kennedy assassination. Well, as I've said repeatedly, I don't mind being called an anti-Semite. You know why? Because they say that just about... They've, they've said that just about about everybody of any consequence in the world. Some of the most brilliant people, some of the most brilliant writers, entertainers, some of the best people in public life here in Europe, all around the world, great intellectuals, everybody's an anti-Semite. And they've widened the definition of anti-Semitism to say that, well, according to the Merriam-Webster, if you're a critic of Israel, then you are an anti-Semite. Well, yes, folks, I am a critic of Israel. And so if that makes me an anti-Semite, by God, I'm proud to be an anti-Semite. And I think that would be, I think I could speak for, uh, you know, I, I, looking at what Alex Jones has said about critics of Israel, calling them scum. Hey, Alex, I'm a critic of Israel, and I'm not scum. And Hashem Talawi, who broadcasts in this network, He's a critic of Israel. He's not scum. Mark Glenn, you think he's scum? No, Alex Jones, we're not scum. And I take it personally when you say the critics of Israel are scum, Alex, because we're not scum. What is scum? I don't know. I use the term myself. But I've never called you scum, Alex. You're saying the critics of Israel are weak-minded idiots? You say, I watch these Nazi and anti-Israel groups. They're a bunch of scum. Well, Alex Jones, Alex Jones, that back in the 1960s, when the Ku Klux Klan, one of the, one of the chapters of the Ku Klux Klan, and there were many chapters of the Ku Klux Klan, folks, the chapter, one chapter in particular was particularly influential, and it was led by a guy named Bill Wilkinson. And it is a known fact that Bill Wilkinson was a longtime informant for and working on behalf of, for whatever reasons, which are known only to him and to God and the FBI, but Bill Wilkinson was working for the FBI. And it is a known fact, ladies and gentlemen, and this completely refutes Alex Jones' convoluted theory. It is a known fact that Bill Wilkinson had a very firm role. You can. All I have to say to you is, Alex Jones, take a running jump straight into hell.
Because if you're going to call the people who have the guts to stand up and criticize Israel, which has the wealthiest, most powerful lobby in this country, which has the backing of billions and billions of dollars from some of the wealthiest people on the face of the planet, and you call us the anti-Israel groups, the critics of Israel scum, well, Alex, I, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that it says more about you than it says about us. I've been, I, you know, I mean, I gave, I gave, I've been giving Alex the benefit of the doubt here for a long, long time, folks. Even though on his program, he allowed people like Robert Groden to call me an anti-Semite because I wrote a book that suggested Israel.